A lot of you asked for more detail, live narration, and more frequent episodes. This episode changes up the format a bit, so think of this as a trial run. If this is what you want to see, let me know. Also, everyone that's only seen the S10 videos, I have another series working with a friend known as Dotson 280Z that I think you'll like just as much. Last episode ended with a rebuilt transmission and a blown head gasket. So we're going to do a full rebuild on this engine. To do that, the first step is to take the engine back out of the truck. With help from a friend, we unhooked everything and got it out in just a couple hours. We put the engine straight onto the stand after taking it out of the truck. The transmission is being supported with the same board used last episode to support the engine. We were running out of daylight and I just needed to know which bearings and rings I needed to order, so we went straight for taking off a cylinder head and then unbolting the bottom end. The intake came off, all the rocker arms and push rods looked good, and then we got to loosening the cylinder head bolts. This was the cylinder head with the gasket leak, and the bolt next to it snapped right off. So uh, we're gonna have to deal with that later. But at least the head's off and we can see the pistons. Next up, we loosen the main caps and two connecting rods so we can check the bearing sizes. And it's a good thing we did because both the crank and block have been machined, which means this engine has been rebuilt. Everything turns freely and the cylinder walls look good. The wrist pins move freely and the pistons are in very good shape. However, the same cannot be said about the bearings. I have no idea how many miles are on this, but I do not think the rebuild was recent. This pattern almost looks like premature wear. The journal surfaces aren't bad, but they're also not perfectly smooth. So before putting it back together, I'd like to try polishing this crankshaft. Now we're going to change the pace up. This part of the video is going to get very in-depth, so you guys are going to have to let me know if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see. Okay, let's get back to taking this engine apart. First up, let's get the harmonic balancer off. I'm just going to use this Harbor Freight puller to pull the balancer off. These are super cheap, and it has served me very well. Nine sixteenths. I'm just going to jam this piece of wood in here to stop the crank from turning. Yep, coming right off. Easy as that. Now this pulley puller, also from Harbor Freight, I have not used before. Hopefully I can figure it out. Okay. That looks crooked. seem to get it on straight. Hopefully that's okay. It's kind of crooked. I can't get it on straight. Oh, that's scary. Let's get the safety glasses. Mm. I do not think that is working. So we just took off the balancer, that was nice and easy. This guy does not want to come off. So we got it nice and hot, put some PB in there, gonna let it sit, and then I'll get it nice and hot again and give that another go. We already started taking this apart, enough so that I could order parts like bearings and piston rings with the right sizes. This engine was rebuilt at some point because the main and rod bearings are 10 thousandths oversized and the pistons are 30 over. You can still see a lot of the cross hatching in the cylinders. They look pretty good. So we only took off the driver's side cylinder head. I'm gonna go ahead and get started taking this side apart. Any parts that have bolts on a line are going to have a tendency to warp up in the center. So when you're loosening, you always wanna start on the outside and work your way in. 
As you can see, I didn't have the right length bolts when I first put this together, and there are some funny sizes and uh, no shortage of anti-CEUs. This exhaust gasket is very strange. I got it at Advance Auto because it was very cheap, and I have no idea what this is made out of. I have not seen one like this before. It doesn't seem like it was leaking. I never noticed anything. Almost like, like old organic stuff. Asbestos and whatever. So this is the coolant temp sender out of the 4.3. I kept this because I knew it would work with the gauge. This is the one off of the 350 and it has the older button style terminal on it. I left this in the other side head just so I didn't have to use a plug. You can see I replaced the core plug by the starter because there was a coolant leak there. I left all the other ones in because I'm lazy. But for this rebuild, I guess I'll replace them. Now how about the water pump? There's nothing wrong with this one, and I'm pretty cheap about most things, but uh, this time I did order a new one. This thing has some serious crust. I can't even get the socket onto these. I'm gonna have to excavate. Oh, there we go. Well, it's on there pretty good, huh? Quick release, jeez. Okay, I'm back with a vengeance for this guy. Now see, the trick here is to do this without burning the hell out of yourself. I'm not so good at that trick. Theoretically, it should want to come off. It sure smells like it wants to come off. I don't want to get it too hot, because I bet the power steering pump wouldn't appreciate it. Getting a little crooked there. Sounds like hell. That ain't good. That is more than a wood crooked. These guys are too loose in that ring. I mean, look at that. That doesn't. Hmm. Cut this piece of sheet steel, and I'm just gonna shove this in there. Hopefully, take up some of that slack. Somebody's doing something. Still on there, straight. Aha. That's the sound of success, I guess. Ta-da! If you're gonna use one of those, make sure it's make sure it's tight on there. So the threads in here are standard, but these are metric. These right over here are imperial, and these are metric. GM just really liked to party in the 80s, huh? Now I can finally take off this whole deal. Next we can take off the timing cover, or maybe we should just call it the griming cover. I'm also going to go ahead and knock out three and five. And so you're gonna to wanna to be able to put these little guys back in the way they came. You get these nice little number punches. And you can either do it across the parting line or do one above and one below. That's really up to you. But what you'll usually see 
is you mark these on the outside so that you always know the orientation. Using a punch for it gives you a nice permanent mark. And just like that, sometimes you'll have a stubborn cap. All you gotta do is give it a little fry, just make sure you're not anywhere near any bearing surfaces. And make sure it's coming off even. Barely applying any force to do that. Another not good looking bearing there. Now what you really don't want to do is have these studs scratch the crank on their way out. You can get little caps specifically made for this, but these are just vacuum caps. Get some piece of wood that's going to fit all the way up against the piston. And start tapping it out. Once it gets near the deck surface, make sure you're there to catch it. And take it out nice and careful. Try not to scratch the uh, cylinder walls and there you go. And then you're just repeating that process seven more times. You would very frequently have a ridge here, right at the end of the cylinder. So everything behind the ridge gets worn by the piston rings, and everything up here does not. So if you have severely worn cylinders, you're going to have a big nasty ridge here, and you do not want to force the piston rings over that. This is totally fine, but if you did have a ridge, there's a tool you can get called a ridge reamer, but it is a sort of lathe cutting tool that you spin in the bore, and it will cut that ridge right off for you so you can get your pistons out. While I'm looking at it, I'm going to go ahead and knock this freeze plug out. I'm doing things in kind of a crazy order here, but uh, just bear with me. All I'm doing is hitting one side of this plug, and if we're lucky, it'll start moving. <sighs> you want to play like this, huh? And all you're going to do is give it a nice little... And if they're steel like this one, you can always get a magnet on them. Be careful, you do not want to scrape up the soft cast iron bore here. Crusty. By the way, the easiest way to tell if you have undersized bearings is to read them. Main bearings, same thing. And replacement pistons are also going to tell you what you want to know. With that said, you still wouldn't want to rely completely on that. Check it for yourself. What you really want is a micrometer. It's certainly not a dollar store digital caliper. But, just to give you an idea, you just see what it wants. Yep. 4.03 inches. I wouldn't base any engine building decisions on anything this thing tells me, but uh, it's not bad. And the same thing for your raw journals. Not bad, 2.10 would be stock. Huh. The main caps are already stamped, and that's very good, because you do not want to mix up your main caps. So we already loosened these to check the main journal bearings. And same as other things, you're starting on the outside, working your way in. If you have a four bolt main, uh, look it up. So when you do go to take the main caps off, uh, you gotta loosen the bolts first. So when you do go to take the main caps off after they're numbered, all you're gonna do is really just, just wiggle. Use the bolts to get some leverage on them and wiggle them off. A lot of the times the center caps will be uh, trickier, but same idea. If you really got it, you can take a mallet, give them a tap. As far as the direction of the caps, just keep the text facing rear to front. It would be face up. All I'm doing is giving it little taps to make sure everything seats right. 
And I'm just gonna tighten these up just a hair so I can flip the thing back over. This is not a great order to do things in. For this side, we're just gonna go through everything we already did over here. This time you'll get to see it. Center bolt valve covers just have four bolts. That's all that's holding it on. I already replaced these with uh, silicone gaskets. They're much easier to reuse. Now for the rocker arms. So starting at the back here, this is cylinder number eight. We want to keep track of all this stuff. And then push rod is going to come out. Now you want to keep all these together because the push rods will wear mate into the rocker arms and into the lifters. And on down the line. I whipped up this little valve train organizer because I'm too cheap to buy one. So basically all it is is a holder for the push rod, intake valve and exhaust valve, lifter for each. I'm going to keep everything organized. And if you look down in here, these are your lifters. All I'm doing is taking a little magnet, and usually you're gonna have to do some wiggle in here. And there's your lifter. I should point out that you really should probably turn the cam and loosen that nut while the lifter isn't pushing up on it, but uh, it's okay. Next up, the cylinder head bolts. Make sure you get them all and make sure you follow the detorque sequence and be ready for a fight. Okay, they're all cracked loose. If your engine's not already empty, you're gonna have coolant come out of these, just be prepared for that. So there's a couple different length bolts. Leave one bolt in until you're ready to take it off. Please don't drop your cylinder heads. Sometimes they're really stuck on, sometimes they just come right off. Of course this one's gonna make me look like an idiot. Sometimes they just need a little extra love. Yeah, huh, that's on there pretty good. There we go. Now, carefully, remove your Jesus bolt. And one, two, three. And that's what the head gasket is supposed to look like. Minus, minus all of that. That's pretty gross. And this is when you'd normally go ahead and take out all your lifters. If it gets stuck, don't keep pulling. Just twist, 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 pull until it does come out. I'm just gonna peel that off. And now we're ready to flip it back over. Once the cylinder heads are off, it gets a lot easier to rotate. But still, be careful. Now we're gonna mark this side and just uh, just make sure you're you're getting the right number there. Two, four, six, eight. Gonna break all the caps loose. All that's left before we can take the crankshaft out is the rear oil seal housing. So all I'm doing is jamming a piece of wood in here so the crankshaft is not going to rotate. Oh, I'm going to have to take it back off the sand. That's not happening.
And there's our good old buddy, the time and chain. Hey buddy, how you doing? You can use this plug on the bottom to drain out all the coolant before you flip it over. If you want to. You know, if you want to.